We welcome you into episode number seven already of the best podcast available, Training Camp Edition. I'm Jason Gibbs alongside Andrew Gribble, just off the practice field. And the gentleman uh, wearing the brown and orange with a well-deserved day off tomorrow. I would like to say we have a well-deserved day off. Tomorrow's the day that we get caught up on everything that we haven't been able to do because we've been outside to practice every day. Gribbs, uh, welcome. And takeaways from a, uh, from a final day of the week. You know, we, we have six practices under our belt. Um, I'm not giving Saturday as, the, as our day off. This is really tomorrow the first day off. But uh, we've seen six practices. Today, no pads, shells, a little bit longer practice, but getting some good work in on the football field. Yeah, and I thought, uh, you know, clearly not as physical as the other few days of practice, but I think still a lot of good work. And I, I think it was, to me, it was a much needed pick-me-up for the offense, I thought. And I know the circumstances are a little different. You're not hitting, you're not in full pads, but it's just good to see plays being made by your best players. And I think that to cap it off with, a, with Baker's long TD pass to, to Odell in double coverage, that, that's something that makes you feel good uh, going into – into the break and I think that there was a point in practice where I just looked at the huddle and I just saw Baker, Kareem Hunt, Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry and Austin Hooper. I was like, you know, as, as much as the offense has struggled a bit to start camp, I, mean, I, I think they'll be all right. I think they're going to figure it out and I think that it's good to see these guys on the practice field, which is again something we didn't see last year and I, I think that's that, that's the important thing and will help this team get up to speed as, as in time for the season opener. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, this is this is going to be a process with the offense. I mean, Baker Mayfield's dealing with his third coach and different offensive system. And you said it last year, guys weren't on the field to gel. Now they are. Kareem Hunt. Everybody forgets Kareem Hunt wasn't really uh, on the field last year for the preseason. He was dealing. Uh, he was dealing with uh, with a hernia issue. And uh, you know, there's no Nick Chubb right now. And we're missing a couple offensive linemen. But uh, for the most part, uh, the offense is in a little bit better shape health-wise than the defense. And it was good to see them get back on track, especially Gribbs, I think, in the red zone today. They needed a little confidence booster, and they got one there. Yeah, and it was, it was through a variety of plays. I mean, I thought there, there were some bigger holes for Kareem Hunt to run through. I even saw Dearness Johnson make, like, a nice jump cut near the end zone and getting in there. And then – we saw a really nice connection between Baker and Jarvis Landry, where Jarvis was able to do some toe tapping in the back of the end zone. So you, you just saw more successful offensive plays, which is, is good to kind of see the back and forth going on. And, and I think the defense will be the first to say, well, that's because we're not hitting right now. And uh, I'm sure they would said there was probably a couple sacks that didn't get called. Uh, but at the same time, it just felt like a crisper day for the, for the offense and, and show that they learned some things. Uh, after after yesterday's practice, yeah, definitely a little uh, a little positivity for that room, and and much needed, I think, going into the off day. Give them a little momentum, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens on Saturday when they come back. On an injury front, that list continues to grow. Uh, Kevin Johnson, uh, a corner that I know we've talked about, we've talked about on Browns Daily, Browns Live. He is he's starred. Uh, I think, uh, in that nickel role. Uh, unfortunately, going to be lost for some time. A lacerated liver hurt, uh, I believe. New one. Pardon? That's a new one. That I, yeah, I had to look again when it happened. I said, La kidney? Liver? Kid liver? Oh, okay. That is a new one. Uh, hurt yesterday. Uh, looked like in the seven-on-seven seven drill. Um and just unfortunate for a guy that was playing really, really well and was going to be a big contributor to the defense. Now, I mean, who knows on a timetable, you just want the guy to be okay as, as he sits in a hospital room right now. So um, a lot to think about our thoughts and, and well wishes for Kevin Johnson, but uh, a tough loss and a tough blow to this defense. Yeah, I think Stefanski described it correct. Un unfortunate and unlucky. And it, I think they even showed the replay of the, of what happened on Browns Live today, and it just looks like nothing out of the ordinary. And I, I think it's just one of those kind of freak things. And and like you mentioned, I would say the timetable is definitely uncertain because I don't I don't think either of us had anything to compare this to. I mean, no. again, you just the, the 
Ke uh, you know, Kevin's health is of the utmost importance right now. Get get him up, get him out of the hospital, and then uh, you see how it goes. That it'll just be interesting to see what what is the timetable. But uh, from here on out, you're you're planning on probably someone else being in that slot corner uh, for the foreseeable future. And I think today we've seen a lot of MJ Stewart. Uh, we've seen a little bit of Donnie Lewis, uh, potentially AJ Green. I, I think there's a rotating cast of characters for. I think what we view as a very important position on this defense and probably someone, if it's not Kevin Johnson in week one, someone who's going to be out there playing a lot of snaps. Yeah, indeed. Uh, on the offensive side, no Jack Conklin today. Any update from the team on him? Described as scheduled rest. So it's, it's nothing uh, too major. Should be back out there on Saturday. And it's nice to have you, even though he had some, some struggles last year, it's nice to put in last year's starter as the backup. I, I think that's, that's, that's not too bad, and I think the offense didn't miss too much of a beat without him out there. No, I would agree with that as well. Nick Harris went to the locker room, had a minor panic attack on the field. Me, not him. But <laughs> he went to that. the locker room. Clarify that. No, 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 no. Yeah, me. I had a minor panic attack when he went to the locker room. Uh, but he jogged back out probably about 10 minutes later with, with a trainer, and who knows what it is, but everything's back to normal, and he's under centers. <laughs> or, well, he is the center. So happy to have that back. Uh, also, Miles Garrett back in individual work, not in any teamwork, but good to see Miles back on the field as well. Yeah, you know, I think it's we we've known from the beginning that this was described as a, a very minor injury. Good to get him some some work out in individual periods, and then we'll see uh, what he's he's going to be doing here in, uh, on Saturday when they get back on the field, and we'll see if he'll be participating in team drills and. You know, without him out there, it's been an opportunity for Porter Gustin to kind of recapture some magic he had last year at the end of last season. He had a sack, remember, against the Dolphins and really kind of came out of nowhere and ended up playing a lot of snaps that really no one expected uh, to see at the end of last year. Denzel Ward with an interception today. We haven't talked a lot about Denzel. We haven't talked a lot about Greedy. That probably is a good thing. That means those guys are playing at a pretty good clip. Thoughts uh, on what you've seen from those two through uh, the first week? Yeah, they've both been been really solid, and I thought there was a good play in the end zone there that Greedy uh, was involved in that, that stopping a pass his way. And the question to me, especially in, in light of Kevin Johnson going down, is how, how do you find a way, because we've seen Terrence Mitchell playing so well, how do you find a way to get your best three corners on the field? Because I think Terrence Mitchell – uh, has played really well, but it, you, all three of them have been playing really well at outside corner and not, you, you haven't seen any of them really, really with much experience in the slot. So that's something to keep an eye on because I think clearly those three without Kevin Johnson have, have emerged as your best options at the position. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how they figure out a way just because again, this is the third straight year Terrence Mitchell's had a really good camp and, and he's playing like a guy that deserves to be playing on Sundays and we'll just see how they, they figure out a way to work him into the rotation. Uh, another guy that stood out, made some plays today, got some uh, run with uh, as the number three wide receiver in sets. Kaderil Hodge continues to impress. Yeah, he's just a, 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 a consistent player that I would say the, the majority of time, if you saw three receivers out there, it seems like he's been working with at least the second team, if not the first team. So uh, I thought he made some big plays last year at, at times, and – uh, again, we all know how much Mike Prefer likes him uh, for what he does on special teams. So that that indicates he probably has a future on this team, no matter what he's doing at wide receiver. But uh, I would say, I would put that competition as beyond those two as as wide open. I have really no read on it because I've seen a lot of those guys make some plays. Yeah, I, I think Cadero last year never really got a chance to get settled into the offense because remember he was cut, picked up by us, and literally thrown into the fire and really asked to hold down special teams, which he did really, really well last year. And at the end of the year, he got into some offensive sets, but I don't know if he ever really got comfortable. And this year, looking very comfortable at the wide receiver spot, and someone to continue to watch over the next few weeks. What else stood out to you, or who else stood out to you uh, at day six of practice? But we had a long field goal period, and I thought that was an interesting thing to, to see. And I thought Austin Seibert did – uh, pretty well in it and he, he didn't even have his normal holder which I think was some good improvising because he might have to improvise sometimes in case Keenum stepped in there and, and did, did, did a nice job and I think Seibert was maybe unofficially eight of ten uh, and this came on the the heels of Kevin Stefanski addressing it in his press conference today about bringing in four kickers for tryouts and he, he made it clear it wasn't anything that Austin Seibert 
uh, has done or, or not done, and it's just the team doing its due diligence. And I think something I saw on Twitter that was that was brought up as as an option is you've got practice squads at sixteen, and what it may, could it be in your best interest to have one of those spots be filled by a kicker in the event of what if you what if you all of a sudden are, are without your kicker late in the week? You need an option potentially, and, and instead of just going out onto the free agent market, having to bring someone in potentially and going through all the protocols, you can have someone in your building uh, as a quick replacement. Yeah, no, that's very good thinking by you. A little outside the box thinking, Gribs. I like you gotta, it. You got to think differently in 2020. Yeah, just a little bit. Probably the most fun thing I've seen this week, the scoop and score drill for the entire team. Yes. Not one of those things that I've ever seen before. No, that was that – was, I've seen a lot on the practice field to the point where everything's pretty monotonous and you, you just think you've seen every drill out there. The fact that it was just thrown into the middle of practice too, it wasn't some like end of period, end of practice fun thing to do. I mean, this was a serious thing. And I would say that's a pretty significant emphasis on, on takeaways. And, you know, we've seen a lot of those, those, those moments in NFL games go very terribly wrong uh, for the offensive lineman or defensive lineman trying to pick up the ball, uh, except when it's Joel Batonio, if you remember correctly, in 2018. Uh, but I, I think that it, any any opportunity to get those big guys to get their hands on the ball, I, I think they're enjoying it. Yeah, I, I, interesting moment. And then another moment earlier in practice that I thought resembled the uh, what Mike Pettin used to do at the end of um, the off-season workouts, basically, uh, end of minicamp. He would have a big lineman out there trying to catch a punt, and if the guy caught the punt, well – Good news. You got to be done a little bit earlier on the last day of the off season. And uh, it's a little bit of fun today for Kevin Stefanski and company back there. Got to keep things light, especially because I think they've run this camp like a pretty tight ship. And I think that we've seen a lot. Everything seems very organized, very fast moving. And, and I think you've got to, got to keep the guys engaged because you can, only, especially when you're not having normal team meetings and normal meetings, these, these guys are doing still virtual meetings in some circumstances. So Got to keep them. Got to keep them locked in, especially going into the day off. All right, that's what happened today at practice. And time now for our player interview. Uh, Gribble sitting down with wide receiver JoJo Natson and a guy that is uh, that, that's in the competition and in the heat of the battle for one of those coveted wide receiver spots. Have a watch and have a listen. All right, we're joined by JoJo Natson here on the best podcast available. And JoJo, what's the first week of, of training camp been like uh, with your new team here in Berea? It's been, it's been good, man. Uh, you know, back to the grind. It definitely feel good to, you know, to get things going a bit each day, each week. And it's feel good just to have that camp feeling, being around the guys and going to work every day with the guys. And for you, when you were looking at, at teams this offseason, what, what about the Browns intrigued you about uh, your possibilities of helping this team out? Well, um, Coach Preef uh, reached out with my agent, and, you know, um, it's more of a return role. And, you know, I, I, that's something I really value in my, in my game. And I felt like, you know, it was the right fit for me. And the fact that, you know, I'm a little familiar with the Ohio area, then the fact that I went to the University of Akron uh, just, you know, felt good to kind of, you know, come back to, to Ohio and be in Cleveland. This may be kind of a, a, a simple question, but what's made you such a successful returner going all the way back to your, to your college days? Um, just, you know, heart, determination, and just, you know, um, just you know, going out there and just giving giving it my all, and just going out there with a quiet in mind when I'm on the field, and you know, just trying to uh, bring the best, bring the best out of myself, and and help the team out in every way possible. And how seriously do you kind of take your craft as a returner? Like, what kind of stuff are you working on in the off season to to get even better at it? Uh, you know, uh, you know, get better with repetition, and you know, catching as many punts as I could, and. You know, working on my elusiveness, my quickness, you know, doing a lot of agility drills. But uh, most importantly, you know, is, uh, you know, doing catching a lot of – doing a lot of reps as far as catching a lot of punts, even if it's off a jug machine or off a punter's foot. Just, you know, just getting a lot of reps daily. 
And, and through the first week of practice, I mean, you're definitely not just catching punts and kicks. I mean, you've had, you've had quite a role in the offense so far. What, what has it been like getting involved and, and, and getting back to, to catching passes and even doing some end rounds? Uh, man, it feels good. Uh, it definitely feels good to go out and line up as a receiver and make a couple catches and, um, you know, just trying to show the coaches and, you know, my teammates uh, what I can do outside of the returning kicks. And, you know, I'm just trying to keep getting better. I got some guys and uh, we got some guys in our room, the receiver room, who I'm trying to learn from every day. So I think it's just good and uh, it's, it's good for me to you know be around these guys and learning from these guys every day, and um, you know just trying to get better and keep perfecting my craft as a receiver and a returner. Yeah, has it been encouraging to kind of see the kind of plays that have been drawn up that that have called your number, like and and how they might fit your skill set? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of in the rounds, reverse plays, you know, coaches, uh, coach put me in on and, you know, the guys are doing a good job, you know, uh, you know, blocking for me on the perimeter with those plays. And, you know, even if it's some pass catching plays, with a lot of option routes, uh, it's been, it's been really well for me. Now I went back and, and looked at your, your college stats and I, the one that raises the big eyes is your junior year. You had 50 rushes to go along with, with 51 receptions. I mean, what 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 was it like to have that kind of role, and and how did that kind of make you the player that you are today, doing a lot of different things? Um, you know, with my return abilities, uh, my coach that then seen, you know, that I was special with the ball in my hand, and you know, he seen fit to you know give me a couple rushes, which ended up you know being pretty well for me, and and I just kind of took off from there with that with that role, and that was pretty much it. And for you, when you were getting ready to to get prepared for training camp, how how different was it for you to sign with a team and then not really even get to to visit the facility, get to get to meet meet your new teammates? What what kind of challenge was that like? Oh, that was man, that was a big challenge. You know, it was without having the OTAs this year and just doing everything on Zoom meetings, trying to learn the offense. Most importantly, it was it, it was very different, man. But you know, sometimes you have to adjust and adapt. And in life, and you know, I think that's just kind of what what the situation was, and you know, it end up, you know, I wouldn't say working out for the best, but it end up, you know, it end up keeping me grounded and made me study a little more and just you know look at film a little more on my downtime. So it end up working out for me at, at the end of the day. What's it been like getting to know Chad O'Shea as a wide receivers coach? Oh, it's been really well, Coach Coach O'Shea, man. He. He's been in the game for a while. He knows what he's saying, and it's just amazing, you know, because he's been around some really good receivers, and you know, the fact that he tells us, you know, some of those guys, how how he coached some of those guys, and the knowledge that he brings us is really is, is really good for the receiver room. And then for you, what's it like being in a room with both Jarvis and Odell, and and, and a bunch of other young guys uh, yeah, looking at the final? It's a blessing. It's a blessing being around those guys, man. Those guys are very talented. And I, like I told uh, Odell the other day, man, I'm just I'm just trying to soak up the game, man. And for you, without a preseason, what what do you have to do to to get ready and know that the first game you play is is the real deal this year? Uh, I think it's all man, it's all mental uh, at this point. You know, knowing that the fact there's no preseason game, so just you know coming in daily, every day, just trying to you know take one one step closer. And um, keep preparing my mind and body for that game, but it's uh, you know definitely when when it comes that time for us to get ready, to prepare for that week one game. I feel like we're definitely gonna be ready. Jojo, thank you so much for for joining the podcast, and, and good luck with the rest of camp. All right, appreciate it. Gribs, thoughts on Jojo Natson this week? Uh, again, like you, I think like you said earlier, that all the wide receivers seem to be making plays, but. Natson can also do some stuff on the special team side, which I think Mike Prefer likes and this football team could ultimately end up liking. Well, we all remember how highly Mike Prefer spoke of Jojo Natson last year going into that game against the Rams. So clearly a lot of respect there. And uh, I think that the thing that stood out to me with, with a couple plays with, with Jojo is that you've got to play into his skill set. I mean, I think it's so crazy to me. I had to double, I had to do like a triple take with his stats at Utah State, his final year there before transferring to Akron, that they attempted 50 rushes with him. And I think that that was just crazy. Like that, how many end rounds can you do 
but clearly he's got a, a lot of speed, a lot of quickness. And, and if you're doing it 50 times, clearly he's got some vision uh, to find the holes where they're at because a lot of times those end arounds just end up running out of bounds. Yeah. They don't really go anywhere. So to keep going to that well, I think that shows that there's a, there's a special skill set that he has uh, that can help him out there. And clearly if you're looking at the punt return, kick return, I think we all like the potential of Donovan Peoples Jones. Uh, but Natson has done it uh, at a high level for multiple years on a very good team. Uh, so we'll, we'll see who, how that plays out. Uh, but I think he's taking it pretty seriously and listening to him talk about how he works on his craft. I mean, a lot of guys catch balls off jugs machines. He's catching punts off jugs machines. So I think that's something he takes pretty seriously and he knows that's really his, his niche in the NFL right now. Yeah, and we wish him the best of luck, a good kid, and uh, hoping for some big things in 2020 from JoJo Natson. All right, best thing you saw this week, most concerning thing that you saw this week as it pertains to the Cleveland Browns through six practices. I think the best thing I've seen this week, and I'll go – I mean, the easy answer would be the, the great catch from Odell today, but I'll, I'll go in the defensive line, and I think that that group has been really good – without two of its starters. I think they've brought constant pressure uh, with, I think to me, I don't know if it's been talked about it much at all, but Sheldon Richardson looks like he's in great shape. And I think that he yes. he's moving around really well. And I think Olivier Vernon's healthy out there and contributing. And we it, Jordan Elliott and Port Augustine have looked pretty good on the first team defensive line. They haven't had a drop off. I think they've caused, they've been the root of some of the offense's issues in the first few days of practice. Uh, so I've liked that that group and, and the depth that they've shown so far, and uh, a lot of, lot to be encouraged by, especially with Jordan Elliott. Is it me or we were watching the defensive linemen because they were doing their position drills right in front of us? Everything else was a quarter of a mile away, but uh, on the defensive line, it looks like all you, you mentioned Sheldon Richardson. A lot of those guys look like they slimmed down a little bit or put on a little bit more muscle. Uh, the whole room looks a little bit different as they were going through drills today. When you've got Miles Garrett in your room, you, you've always get and you, and you see him lifting. I mean, you've got to start keeping up with the Joneses in your room. I mean, that's the that's part of the uh, maybe that's the 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 fact the Miles factor in that room. You've got to got to get get the body right. I mean, Ogan Joby, we've talked about. I mean, the the guy has transformed his body like crazy, and I'm excited about what he can do when he gets back on the field as well. Yeah. Nope. And I would think he could be back relatively soon. And um, Stump Mitchell today in his press conference uh, and meeting with the media said, Nick Chubb's in the meetings. We're just waiting for him to get cleared to go back out on the football field. So one would think that would, that might happen sooner rather than later as well, which will be a good thing. Uh, what do you want to see? Uh, we're, we're off to four straight days of practices here after tomorrow's day off. Uh, what are you looking to see from this football team? Well, because I, since I didn't answer the second part of your question and the last question, I'll connect these two. And that the worst thing I've been seeing is the number of injuries. And I think that that's something that really a lot of these, they're kind of out of your control. You can do as much as you can to prevent them. But I would like to go a, a five-day stretch without having to, to worry about someone new each day, especially because it isn't like uh, these have been like, projected backups or guys like that. These have been contributors that have major contributors that have been uh, sidelined by these injuries. So let, let's get a little bit of a dry spell. Let, let's get this team healthy and, and back in, in, in much better shape for, for the opener. Yeah. I, I think the other, for, for me, what I want to see next week is the, that offensive line, Jedrick Wills, who's still getting a feel for playing in the national football league. He's, he's played and he's had six practices. Yeah. against NFL talent and NFL caliber uh, talent and the, our defensive line. I, I think next week you need to start seeing the offense and, and Jedrick start to take that next step because, you know, we, t we talk about the rookies not having too much pressure on them um, because knowing there's going to be a little bit of a curve and even more of a curve than in past off seasons because there hasn't been an off season. Um, but he is the one that really has to hit the ground running from a rookie standpoint week one in Baltimore on September 13th. Yes, I, I haven't noticed in the last few days. And I think that's a good sign when you're on the offensive line. I think that that tells me he's doing enough at this point to, to make me feel good about the progress he's making. Yeah. Odell, keep doing what you're doing. My goodness, what a day he had. Kareem Hunt, keep doing what you're doing. 
the tight ends, uh, everybody playing well. Uh, the linebacker room, you know, Mac Wilson's down, but that room is not dead and buried by any stretch. Taki Taki and Goodson flying all over the football field. Uh, some good work by them, and, and we'll see what happens with Andrew Berry and company over the next week or two to see if uh, maybe there's some additional help on the way with Mac being on the shelf for a little bit. Player day off on Friday. We are back with you on Saturday, and we'll start this uh, rotation all over again, consecutive days, and hopefully getting some more good work in as we work our way towards September 13th. Thanks to Jeff McDaniel for his time and all of his help. Thanks to Jojo Natson, and we wish him continued success here in the training camp period. For Andrew Gribble, I'm Jason Gibbs. Make sure you log on to clevelandbrowns.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe today to the best podcast available. You can also check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash browns. We're back with you Saturday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the best podcast available.